Let's talk more about securities markets. You might have heard these terms bull markets and bear markets, so let's talk a little bit about what those are and what the differences are between them. In a bull market, um, prices are going up and the market is advancing or the, the security values are increasing. And so the bear market would be the opposite. In the bear market, the securities prices are falling. One way to remember it is check out the bull and the bear at the bottom of the screen. If you notice, the bull's horns are pointing upward, and so that's a reminder that a bull market means it's rising, and when the bear attacks, it puts its head down. And so with the bear market, that reminds you that prices are falling. So how do you make transactions in securities markets? Well, stockbrokers do the work for you, and so um, selecting a broker is something that you'll want to think about if you want to make transactions in the securities market. Do you want a full service broker? Do you want a discount broker? Do you want to do all your trading online? Those are things that you might want to think about. Do you want low cost um, and therefore low service? That's something to think about. And do you need any, st any sort of investor protections? Something else to think about when you're thinking about investing in the stock market is the historical returns. Again, remember, this is very different from investing. Your principal is at risk, so you can lose money. So if you look at this graph, the blue bars show where returns fell between 1900 and 1999. And from 2000 to 2010, so more recently, those are indicated by the purple blocks. So you'll see that returns average anywhere from negative 50 to positive 50 percent, um, but they tend to cluster more on the positive side, but there is some fluctuation. So again, we talked about different types of brokers, full service, discount, and online. So here are some examples. If you think you know which category you want to be in, here are some names that you might want to check out. You've probably heard more of the online broker names because they do a lot of advertising. And I would say um, most small retail investors will go with an online broker because it's quick and easy and very inexpensive. But if you need more guidance and more hand-holding, then you might want someone in one of the other categories. Now, more terminology. Odd lots or round lots. It used to be that you could only buy stock in round lots. That means multiples of 100 shares. But now, with the advent of online trading, you can buy one share of stock if you want to. Now, the problem with that is that you're going to pay a transaction fee for every transaction. So your price, your price per share for your stock is going to be much higher the smaller the quantities are. Now remember I said, do you need some sort of investor protection? That would factor into your decision of what type of um, broker you choose. And so similar to the FDIC that governs um, bank accounts, the SIPC governs brokerage accounts. And so they will protect you in the event that the brokerage account, or the broker itself, the brokerage firm, fails. So it insures accounts up to $500,000. So that, that should make you feel a little bit better about your investments. So it doesn't guarantee that the value of your security, against the value of your security is declining. It's mostly guaranteeing against um, losses due to fraud or failure of the firm. So how do you execute trades? Well, it's going to depend on what type of broker you have. If it's an online, bro online broker, um, most of them have apps and you can trade right from your phone. Um, depending on the level of service, you, you may not talk to a person at all or you may strictly just make a phone call or maybe even your broker calls you if you have a full service broker. So now when you're placing those orders, what types of orders do we use? A market order says, hey, I really want to get into that stock. Just buy it now as fast as you can, and I'll take the best price you can get. A limit order says, hey, I want this stock, but I'm not willing to pay any more than a certain amount. Or I want to sell this stock, and I'm not willing to accept any less than a certain amount. A stop loss order says, okay, I already own this stock. And if, it, if the stock price drops to this level, sell it right away. So 
it's in the, we use a stop loss order to stop our losses. Once you start investing, it's very important to keep up with your investments. Um, read the annual stock reports, read the financial press, find out what's going on in the market. Um, keep up with the companies that you're invested in. So there are a lot of sources in the U.S. for stock market data. There are lots of analysts, lots of reporting agencies. So in this country and most other developed countries, um, there's no shortage of financial information. So you really want to take advantage of that and become an informed investor. Yahoo Finance is a great site. Um, Morningstar is a great site. And there are also a lot of resources through the UAB library. So if you're reading, which I strongly recommend that you do, your company's annual report, here are some things to take a look at. Look at the overview so you get the highlights of their year in, in terms of their financials. Read the CEO's letter where they spell out what was good, what was bad, probably more emphasis on the good, but you want to get a take from the top about what's going on in the company. And then the real meat of the annual report is in what we call the MD&A, Management's Discussion and Analysis. That's where they talk section by section about you know, what drove the numbers for that year. And then you dig into the financial statements and notes and look at the actual numbers. Lastly, you want to just eyeball the auditor's report and make sure that it's a, what we call an unqualified opinion, meaning the auditor thought that the financials were clean, they accurately represented what's going on with the company, and the company is not in danger of going out of business anytime soon. We've talked a lot about online investing. Again, lots of research is available, lots of online services are available. So we had that list of different online brokers, and most of them have pretty robust research tools on their website. So if you're thinking of going that route, just do your homework and check into all of the services that they offer. So now, if you start investing, you followed all of these tips, um, you, now you've got to manage your portfolio. You want that portfolio to be diversified, meaning that you don't have all of your eggs in one basket, um, meaning not all of your investments are tied up in one security. You want to allocate your assets according to your financial objectives that we talked about in the beginning. How much of your money needs to be in stocks? How much should be in bonds? How much should be in cash? How much should be in mutual funds or some other vehicle? And then you want to just keep up with your portfolio and kind of as you as you, the, the values change, hopefully grow, you might need to shuffle things around. So you're constantly checking up on your portfolio to see what action is needed. So your investor objectives are going to be a trade-off between earning high current income, which is probably more important to people who aren't earning wages, and capital appreciation, just seeing, it, seeing the value of your investments grow over time. Uh, we just talked about asset allocation and managing your portfolio. So again, that's talking about allocating your funds between stocks, bonds, cash, and other securities. So that's something to, to think about given the, the risk and return trade-off of those different choices.